The second exercise in the Promax Foundations manual covers how to model a simple sour water stripper. The first thing to do when starting the model is to specify the environment. To remind myself which environment to use, I can right click in the property package area of the screen. It says here that for sour water strippers, I should use the electrolytic ELR property package. I can choose either SRK or Peng Robinson to perform the vapor phase calculations. For this example, I'll choose Peng Robinson. I then should go to the components tab and set the desired components for the project. In this case, ammonia, H2S, phenol, HCN, and water. Once you've selected these components, select Apply and OK. The feed conditions are given as 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 0.3 PSIG, and 545 standard gallons per minute. The feed composition is given as 0.55 mass percent ammonia. 1.2% H2S, 0.1% phenol, 0.001% HCN, and 98.149% water. In the pump. The discharge pressure is a property of the outlet stream, so I'll set that in the outlet. This then enters a heat exchanger, and we're told that the outlet that is feeding the stripper is 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Setting this still leaves us with a degree of freedom. I could set many things, but the most appropriate value to set is the heat exchanger pressure drop. While I'm in the exchanger, I will set both pressure drops, since this is a two-sided exchanger. I'll choose to make them both 5 PSI. Double-clicking on the column will now allow me to start setting the column configuration. We're told that the column has seven ideal stages. This is the number of stages that Promax should show, since Promax works on an ideal stage basis. This is already set up, but can be modified if required on the Connections tab, Right-clicking on a displayed tray will provide the options to add or remove stages. On the Process Data tab, I can verify that this is an equilibrium column type and can attach the condenser to the column from down here. The Stage Data tab then allows me to set the operating pressure of the column. We're given that the top stage is 8 PSIG and that the column has a 1 PSI pressure drop. The next tab provides a place for column specifications. We're given that the condenser temperature is 185 degrees Fahrenheit. We will add a new specification to the tower here, but notice that there is not a specification type titled Temperature. Instead, we must select Phase Property, since the temperature is the property of a phase of a part of the column. Once I select this, I can rename it Condenser Temperature, then select Condenser, Total Phase, and Temperature. Give it the target value of 185 degrees, leave the tolerance box blank, select Active, and OK. Close the column dialog box and let's take a look at the thermosiphon reboiler. We're given that 70% of the bottoms are returned to the column, so we can set this split directly. We're also given that 15% of what is returned is vaporized. I can set this directly in the outlet of the reboiler. As with all heat exchangers, I should set a pressure drop. I'll again use 5 PSI for this. Finally, I'm also given that the air cooler cools the stream to 110 degrees. I'll give the exchanger a 5 pound pressure drop and then set the outlet stream at 110 degrees. If you attempt to execute the column, and it then requests a pump around duty estimate, this is added as a specification in the column. 
We'll go to the Specifications tab, select Add, and choose Pump Around Estimate. The warning tells us which stream exiting the tower, and in this case should say it's a Pump Around Duty estimate, so we should select Pump Around Duty from the drop-down list. I'll give this an estimate of 5 million BTUs per hour, and click Active to have it use the estimate. Re-executing the column should give us a green solution. The last part requests us to insert a property table to display the temperatures, pressures, flow rates, and compositions of a few streams. First, drag out a property table. Now double-click on the table so we can set which values we would like to appear in it. From the top left, select Grid Columns. From here, select P Streams. Next, add the Sour Water Stream, the Stripper Water Stream, and the Stripper Overhead Stream to the right. Then, from the Grid Rows selection, choose Properties, P Streams, and then add Temperature, Pressure, and Mass Flow. Collapse this choice here so we can see the Composition option. Next, select By Basis, then Mass Fraction. You can add these one at a time, or by adding the heading Mass Fraction, it will add all of the subset. Select OK, and then you can drag the property table to anywhere you would like it on the flow sheet. The next tutorial will cover how to find the answers to the questions from the Foundations Manual.